So Quad SBI is one of the new peripherals that we have on board the STM32F7. The Quad SBI peripheral, it's got two connections into the bus structure. We have the high-speed bus connection for the data throughput coming off the uh, memory chip. And you still have your peripheral registers and clocks to do all the configuration and settings set up for the Quad SBI. So it attaches to both of the um, clock domains. You can use it in any of the modes, single, dual, or quad. You've got your clock source that goes out, and you've got chip select control goes out in case you need to put the devices into low power mode and shut it down. So, features. So again, you can use each of the different modes. We do support dual quad SPI as well. So if you've got two identical chips, you can uh, wire them in on the uh, board. Most of the time you'll be using memory mapped mode. So you'll be using it as read only, so it'll be data or instructions that will be coming out of there. If you are using a RAM chip, then you can use the other two modes. We support all the different modes inside there. For data throughput, we support single data rate and double data rate as well inside the uh, device. So there's FIFOs on the reception and transmission. So someone was saying about the buffering of uh, what's coming out. So the Quad SBI has dedicated FIFOs built into that periphery as well. And there's the buffer store that's on the AXI bus when it's connected in as to that as well. Uh, the chip select for the low power control as well was in there. Some of the benefits, packages are a lot smaller for these Quad SPIs. Uh, PCB design's a lot easier. You've not got 16 line tracks trailing across a PCB, which means your EMC issues uh, are reduced a little um, without all those signals bouncing up and down uh, in the time. Lots of different memory sizes available. You can do RAM and flash. And there's lots of different third parties out there supplying these uh, Quad SPI devices now. So you've got quite a good selection uh, to choose from. If we look at the performance, how we compare against the parallel devices. So standard parallel device at 90 nanosecond access time, you get a throughput of about 22 megabytes per second on a standard parallel uh, memory chip. If you take the maximum uh, bus width on the serial ones, we get about 50 megabytes. A second. So you're near of double in the performance compared to a standard parallel memory chip with the Quad SPI features. Next new peripheral, SP Diff. So it's the standard um, Sony digital interface. So, so it's, a, it's an industry standard peripheral, um, mainly in the automotive consumer type world, uh, docking ports now for iPods. Anything where you need um, full audio. So we support up to 192 kilohertz for the stereo streaming. Uh, we've got all the PLLs and clock structures so that you can get all the right frequencies that you need for doing all the audio, different uh, selections, for the, all the different symbol rates and that that we've got. Low power timers, a new peripheral for the STM32F family of devices. This peripheral was introduced uh, about 18 months ago in the L0. Um, if you're doing any type of application where you need to put the device into low power uh, and you want to use a timer to wake it up, we now have the ability to run this timer asynchronously, so it doesn't need the internal clock structure to be functioning inside the device, which means that you can now clock it from an external clock source and it can be configured to receive the rising edges and then after so many pulses it wakes the device up again. If you're not using low power features, it is a general purpose timer. Uh, there's lots of different clock sources from the internal structure you can use and it's got lots of different modes like continuous, one shot or PWM mode. So you can use it as a normal timer if you don't need it to be a low power timer for any part of your application. So it's designed to bring out of stop mode primarily. Sleep mode, you've still got your internal clock structure running anyway, so it doesn't add much of a benefit. But stop mode's the lowest power mode that you can drop the device into uh, and you can still wake up. 
Plenty of interrupts. So as I said, it is a general purpose timer. It's got all the various interrupt channels available to do what you need in your application. HDMI CEC, again, another consumer-based uh, peripheral that we've added to the uh, family. This was introduced on the F0 range of devices about five or six years ago. And it will send all the CEC commands from, say, a set-top box through the HDMI cable to usually a television is what you normally connect into. So again, it manages all the protocols that uh, you need for doing the HDMI CDC 